Almighty God, what a joy and a privilege it is to gather for worship, to gather as your people in your house, to celebrate, to praise, and to give thanks. Oh God, we know that you are here, for you have said where two or more are gathered, there you shall be also. So God, we ask that your spirit would so move in this place this morning, that you would open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, and our hearts that we may truly know and understand all you have to say to us in this place on this beautiful morning. For we offer ourselves in worship in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed, which can be found printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's a privilege this morning to welcome the Smalleys, Kelly and Zach, as they present their son for the sacrament of baptism. If you will, and I need to do this, um, well, I need you to turn for the response, and I, I don't think, do we have it printed? We don't have it printed in there, so I need to find it real quick. Y'all come on up. And if you will turn to page 44 in your hymnals, and if you'll be prepared to respond with the congregational response there at the bottom of page 44. Brothers and sisters in Christ, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs to life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated to the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, let the children come unto me, do not hinder them, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. Zach Kelly, as you present your child for baptism, do you profess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before your child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith, be taught the Holy Scriptures, and learn to give regular attendance upon both the private and public worship of God? Will you further endeavor to keep your child under the ministry and guidance of the church till he by the power of God, shall accept for himself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church, will you? Yeah. There you go, buddy. Come see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know, right? What name is given this child? Luke Robert. Luke Robert, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, my goodness. So this is always a special day for me when we get to baptize a little one, and you need to know a little bit about this one. About 15 years ago, I was 
going on a mission trip to Honduras uh, with then our bishop, Bishop Davis, and his wife, and uh, Jennifer. And I met this young woman named Kelly on that trip. And uh, if you get a chance, and I think it's appropriate because her husband's here and it's all right, she had the most beautiful blue eyes that you'll never forget in your life. And so Kelly and I got to know one another and stayed close all these years. And a couple of years ago, she had met this fine young man and asked if I would officiate their wedding. We did their premarital counseling right here. I officiated their wedding. And now they've come this morning to bring Luke to be baptized. Now, Luke's not going to be raised in Atlanta first because they live in Arizona. They said they're, they're, they, they can attest to the fact that our heat is a little different from their heat. But what we're doing this morning is we're baptizing this baby. And what I'm asking you to do is on behalf of those when, when they find the church home that fits them just right and they find that place where Luke will grow, I want you to stand in for those men and women and children who will wrap their arms in love around Luke and raise him in the faith. I want you to, on behalf of those people, affirm our faith and affirm the importance of raising these children in the church. Will you please stand and and recite that part for you? With God's help, we will shorter our lives after the example of Christ, that this child, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Oh God, we give you so much thanks for Luke, for his mom and dad. Be with them all as they seek to grow closer to you and to one another. We pray for that congregation that will wrap them with their love and in which Luke will come to know more about you. May we all renew our commitment to be there for our children, that they may know of your love and your grace and your mercy. Through the name of Christ our Lord, amen. You did such a good job, buddy. Congratulations, you're very welcome. Uh, Oh, I know. (laughs) Very excited. You may be seated, and if you have children with you this morning, I invite you to let them come spend a few minutes with me. I think a couple, somebody's had a birthday yesterday. Did anybody have a birthday yesterday? Now, if you had a birthday, that means you must have had a birthday too, right? No? Oh, okay. Well, we got to get that straight. Your party's today. But happy birthday to y'all. Y'all make sure you tell me. I, don't, I get to see them because I'm friends with their parents on Facebook, so I get to get all the news. But you always make sure if I know you got a birthday going up. So what a special day. Did y'all see that we baptized little Luke this morning? Wasn't that pretty cool? That's a special family to me right there. You know, I, th- I was thinking about this this week. There's so many things in life that are important, right? And, and, and we know all those things, and we talk a lot about this, but I'm just going to be honest with you. The older I get, the more I believe that the most important thing in the world to us are the people in our lives who we love, our relationships. What's that? Yes, mommies and daddies and, and grandparents. Yes, absolutely. There, what? Yep. Poppy, he's right there, isn't he? That's right. While mom and dad are at work, then Poppy's got you here at church, which is a wonderful thing. But I believe that the people we spend time with are the most important things in the world. And so I'm grateful that every Sunday morning that y'all are here, I get to spend a little time with you. And I'm so grateful for the friendships that y'all are developing. And we remember that we build relationships that last a lifetime. And even though we might not see people for a while, they're always our friends. And they're always very, very special to us. So I hope you continue to build strong friendships and that you always have your family by your side. And know this, that God is always there for you. Will you bow your heads and pray after me this morning? Dear God, thank you for all the people who love us and all the people we love. Help us to cherish those relationships throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all can head out to Children's Church.
come to our time of prayer this morning, I always invite you to see our prayer request list that can be found on the back of your bulletin. Um, if there are other celebrations or concerns that you would like to share with our congregation, we invite you to fill out a prayer request card. You can place that in the offering plate when it comes by in a few minutes or um, hand it to me after the service so that we might be praying with you and for you. Um, Many of you, as you were coming in, got word that uh, Bonnie Lane had a fall this morning. She was uh, coming into church this morning, uh, bringing in the, the choir robes for us, and um, had a little slip and fall. Um, she has been taken, um, for precautionary reasons, to uh, Grady. Um, I, I was checking my phone. I got an email from um, one, Dee Dee Gilreath has made her way there and, um, and uh, just asked for prayers for Ross as they sit. Apparently, Bonnie's doing fine, but Ross is the one who's a little anxious, which is understandable for the husband to be a little nervous when his wife has had a fall. So certainly being praying for them this morning. We celebrate our baptism of little Luke this morning, give thanks for Kelly and Zach, their family that are here, and uh, just thankful for this church, this congregation, in all the many ways uh, that we are trying to be the hands and feet of Christ in the city and beyond. Will you join with me as we go to God? In prayer. Almighty God, we come to you as we do each Sunday morning, lifting up our prayers. We've bowed our heads together, we've acknowledged your presence, we've sung your praise. We have baptized an infant into the faith and promised to pray for those who will be beside him in his journey to his own faith. We've prayed for one of our dear members. We've gathered. Oh God, we do all of this for so many reasons. But most importantly, we do it so that in so doing, we might draw closer to you. We often don't understand how that works and at times it's more difficult than others, but we continue to do these things. We continue to come, we continue to worship, we continue to pray, and we're grateful for the assurance that is ours, that you hear us, and that you love us, and that you care about us. Oh God, we continue to pray for our world because it is a broken place, but in the midst of our brokenness, there are always wonderful stories of hope and faith, and perseverance. On our difficult days, oh God, we cling to those stories, those that we find in the Bible and those that we find in our world and how they're interconnected. God, we also come bearing our gifts. You created us and all that is around us, thus all that we have and all that we are is a gift from you. So God, we bring back now to you just a small portion of all that we've been given. Ask that you would accept your tithes and our offerings. As we come this morning bringing our gifts as well as a special offering, we pray for those throughout the world who suffer from disease and ask that you would allow us to help in a small way to work toward eradicating at least one disease that impacts the lives of so many. Open our hearts Open our generosity. For we come now bearing these our gifts and our prayers, and we offer them in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us when we gather we should pray with one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
think that I shall never see. Zelda have been such a blessing to this church for so many years, so thankful for their beautiful gift of music and for the way in which they've led us in worship this morning. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter beginning in the 26th verse, Mark 4, 26. Out of respect for the reading and hearing of God's word, I invite you to stand as you're able. And Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow, but the farmer did not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk and then the head and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come And Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth, yet when it it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth huge branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except through parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Think with me for a few minutes this morning. Everyday miracles. Everyday miracles. We think about miracles in the Bible, and the miracles in the Bible are amazing, the most amazing of which is that Jesus died but was resurrected, that he who is once dead was alive again. Not shortly before, not too soon before Jesus was himself killed, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And so of the greatest miracles we know to bring someone from death to life is among the greatest. But along the way, Jesus had many other miracles as well. Those who were blind 
could once again see. Those who had been possessed by demons were made whole. Those who had been ill were made well. And certainly, gathered among us this morning, I'm sure, are stories of miracles. Stories that we can share about medical miracles or other miracles that have taken place in our lives. But I think it's important for us to remember everyday miracles. Those miracles that seem like the routine, those things, those actions, those events that maybe we take for granted. We baptized a baby this morning, and I had the privilege of visiting the hospital last week when another baby was born into our fellowship. It reminds me of when my Zach was born, who is much taller now and growing way too fast. Let us never take for granted the miracle of childbirth. For healthy mothers and children who come into this world, I don't think we can overstate what a miracle that is. Fortunately, in our country, with, with medical care and advancement, most of the time, almost routinely, babies come and they are born and they're happy and healthy. And that has not always been the case, and that is not always the case in the world. We had Mother's Day a few weeks ago, and we'll have Father's Day next week. And there are many men and women who have desperately desired to be mothers and fathers, but for whatever reason could not. And I assure you that they would tell you to never take for granted the everyday miracle of being able to have a child. Babies are a miracle an everyday miracle that we should not take for granted. As we join Jesus teaching via parable in Mark's gospel, we hear this familiar parable of scattering seed. Just before this in the fourth chapter of Mark, he tells the more extended version that many of us are familiar with when he talks about um, the four soils and how the seed is scattered. And he goes on in the mid part of that chapter to explain what that parable meant. And he's talking about how the, the sower sows the word of God and, 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 that, and that along the way, if, if those seeds aren't sown in the right way, that, that the word of God cannot be shared in the way it was intended. But this is a more simple telling of the story. Because in this parable, Jesus simply says that someone scattered seeds on the ground and then they go to sleep and they rise and they go to sleep and they rise and suddenly from the earth comes a plant. One of my really good friends from Georgia Tech uh, was uh, also from Pine Mountain and we, when I went to be the pastor in Pine Mountain, we made this connection and figured out that, uh, that she was from that small town near Callaway Gardens. She and her husband now own a farm uh, just outside of Pine Mountain and I love the pictures they share from their farm of their produce. They grow just about everything. Yesterday they were at the farmer's market in Warm Springs selling cucumbers and potatoes and I, I, I'm forgetting there were several other uh, squash. And they showed pictures of their bounty that they would take and sell. I, look, I've learned about how plants grow. I get it. You plant a seed in the ground and the, the nutrients from the soil and the water come together and then, then there's, in that seed is something that sprouts up and, and Zach learned about that in science this past year. But let me ask you this question. As much as we intellectually understand about a plant growing, do we really get it? Do we really understand how from that seed this, these huge plants can grow? And aside from planting the seed and doing the very best we can to water it and bring it nutrients, do we forget that there's this great miracle that takes place that brings forth that plant from the earth? I, it, it amazes me every year with the cycles of the seasons that we have in Georgia. In the spring when all of these limbs that appear to be dead begin with these little buds that begin to break open and flowers and leaves come forth. And no less a miracle is in the fall when the temperatures can begin to drop and those leaves begin to fall. 
And once again, they are barren, and this cycle continues over and over and over again. And we, we learn about photosynthesis, and we learn, learn about all these various things, yet if we're honest with ourselves, down deep inside, it's still very much a mystery, a miracle. I had the privilege one time to travel to South Dakota, and I had never seen cornfields as far as the eye could see. And I'd never been on a combine. And I got up on this huge John Deere combine. And in the middle of that combine was a computer screen. And it had GPS. And, and what happens is the GPS drives the combine now. And the combine goes up and down these meticulously prepared rows and it turns itself and it goes back the other direction. And that computer can calculate the yield at any specific point in that property. And what that computer allows the farmer to do is go to that specific point and if the yield is less than what was desired or expected, they can go to that patch of dirt and they can test the soil and see if the sprinklers are hitting it correctly. But at the end of the day, for all of this technology, for all of this incredible machinery we have, the farmer said that at the end of the day, it's still very much beyond their control. One of the sweet men from my home church in Conyers, every Sunday morning, how you doing? And he'd say, I was able to sit up and take nourishment. We need not take for granted the fact that all of us this morning woke up. It's a miracle to wake up in the morning, to see another day, to live and to breathe. I mean, we, we breathe in something we cannot see. Things that we take for granted and we question, and rightfully so, we question God and the existence of God, but yet, how many of you came here this morning in some kind of vehicle? Most of us. How many of you fully understand the workings of an internal combustion engine? Now, I have a brother-in-law who does this for a living, and so I've seen engines completely torn down in his shop. I've seen pistons, and, and the, I've seen the engine block sitting there, and the pistons, and the valves, and the valve springs, all sitting there in a pile, Spark plug, spark plug wires, all sitting in a pile. He meticulously puts all those together and he sells them as one huge unit that goes in a car and you turn a key or punch a button and it fires up and it takes you somewhere. No one ever stops to thinking, what's going on under there that's getting me from here to there? Little explosions, little explosions are happening just in front of you to propel you forward. Controlled explosions gas and air and a spark, boom, happening over and over again many, many times per second. It says that the, the farmer really didn't understand what happened when he sowed the seed. And then we get down to the, to the, uh, the story of the mustard seed. The mustard seed is a very popular parable, and it's told differently in Matthew and Luke's Gospels. And, and there's a little bit of exaggeration going on here because the mustard seed is not, in fact, the smallest seed, nor do mustard seeds grow into the, small, the largest bushes. So we get a little bit of vibrato here, a little bit of poetic license. Here's the message of the mustard seed. The message of the mustard seed is that Many of our dreams, many of our hopes, many of our aspirations start off as something very, very small. In fact, sometimes those dreams and hopes and aspirations start out in ways we don't fully understand. And the fact of the matter is that for some, in some places of the world, the mustard seed, the mustard plant is an invasive species. And it gets in the way of what other people are trying to do, yet it can take over. And so for any of us who have ever struggled to, to reach our potential, to, to live out our dreams and our hopes, we know that sometimes there are people that are constantly trying to eliminate that 
because in their lives it's a nuisance, it's a bother. But what Jesus is trying to encourage those who are hearing this message, don't allow anyone else to take away your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations. Because from the smallest of seeds can grow the greatest of bushes, and that bush can then provide hope for others as the, tree, as the birds are able to find comfort in the shade of that bush. Altogether, these parables and the parables that Jesus tells are confusing. He, he says that they're intentionally confusing for those who are hearing them. And even when he tries to explain it to his disciples, they really don't understand. So here's, here's what I want us to think about, about everyday miracles this morning. Many of them were not meant to understand. And for some of that, us, that can be frightening, if there's anyone in here who likes to control a situation, then to admit that you don't understand something can be less than comforting. But I'm going to tell you what, the older I get and the more that I'm willing to admit what I don't know, the easier that life becomes. Because rather than spending each and every day trying to figure out things I don't understand, I appreciate them for what they are. I try to recognize them as miracles in the world. I love nothing more this time of the year when it's a bright blue sky and suddenly a thundercloud comes up and you see the heavy rains come, but the sun is still shining on the other side of the sky. I immediately begin my search for a rainbow. Because I know that if it's raining on one side of town and the sun is shining on the other, that if I look hard enough, careful enough, somewhere, somehow, I will see a rainbow set in the sky. That symbol of God's promise to us that never again will God destroy the earth by water, but an everyday promise that when God makes a promise, God keeps those promises. One of my standard jokes is to say that I've got a lot of questions when I get to heaven Why do people suffer? Why do children suffer? Why can't we all get along? After I get rid of the important questions, it's then, why why wasn't this the case? Why wasn't chocolate good for me and broccoli bad for me? Life would have been much easier if those were reversed. It's almost the 4th of July, and those who have been with me know that The 4th of July for me in Atlanta means one thing, and that means that I'm going to make my way down Peachtree Road for 6.2 miles. It'll be my 24th Peachtree Road race this year. My love for running goes back to high school. Some of y'all have heard this story before, but it, 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 it blends in well, I think, with what we're talking about this morning. My love for running comes first from my father. My father's always been running. I didn't do a lot of running with my dad, but we rode bikes together a lot. But when I got to high school, I had a an English teacher in 10th grade, Dr. Lewis Birdseye, who took me under his wing for whatever reason, and he encouraged me. He was someone who saw something in me, a a student who was always a good student, a gifted student, but but, but he knew that there was more there, and he he encouraged me to to move up a level in English and, and, and to pursue greater things. He also, when I went to register for 11th grade, encouraged me to come try out for cross country. Uh, Dr. Birds, I I can't run from here to there without breathing hard. I had a wonderful year of cross country, learned so many lessons from him, and this is often the case with our teachers, we lose track with them. But through the, the miracle of Facebook, let's think about this for a second, okay? For all of the faults of Facebook, and, and they are many and numerous, the great gift of Facebook is it allows us to keep up with people we love across states and countries and time zones. If we could use that technology just for what it is best at, it is such a wonderful gift and a miracle. Through the gift of that, that Facebook, I, I, several years ago, I was able to reconnect with Dr. Birdseye. And for the past few years, the night before the Peachtree Road Race, I sent him a quick message thanking him for giving me this love of running and thanking him for for just getting me off on such a right track. 
he and his um, first wife were among the first 110 runners of the very first Peachtree Road Race. So last year, I was walking to the start line with a couple of my friends whom I run with every morning. And as we're walking to the start line, I'm like, Dad, gummit. I forgot to send Dr. Birdseye a message last night. Many of y'all know I love social media, so now I run with my phone so I can can capture some of the moments along the way. As I'm pulling out my phone, now, if you're not from Atlanta, if you're not familiar with Peachtree Road Race, at the start line are tens of thousands of people all trying to get somewhere different. As I'm pulling out my phone to send Dr. Birdseye a message, I look up. And guess who's standing there? He now lives in Oregon, but yet had been invited back for a special event with those inaugural 110 runners. And they were going to begin just ahead of our group. So in the mass of humanity, in the middle of tens of thousands of people, two people who hadn't seen each other in over 25 years ended up in the exact same spot on this planet we call Earth. Skeptics will call it coincidence, happenstance. For me, it was an everyday miracle. I got to in person, face to face, thank a man who'd been a tremendous influence on my life. So here's what I want you to do this week. I want you, I'm only gonna ask for one, you're going to see many more. Here's what I want you to do this week. As you go throughout your day, I want you to be aware of the everyday miracles that take place and write down at least one of them and put it somewhere where you will see it every day. And maybe in the weeks to come, add to that list and put it in front of you. And here's the reason. I believe we need to focus on the positive things in this world. I think we all need to open our eyes to the beauty of God's creation and the miracles that take place every single day. And one way to do that is to be intentional about it. We're not gonna understand it all the time. We may never understand it, but that's okay because just as the farmer sowed the seeds and slept and woke and slept and woke and eventually forth brought forth, God brought forth from the earth, the grain. Over time, our intentionality will bring forth a faith that will sustain us in difficult times. And each of us has a mustard seed in us just ready to explode into a beautiful bush that will help us become all God has created us to be. Don't miss the everyday miracles that take place all around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Closing hymn this morning is hymn number 724, On Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand. Will you stand with me as we sing our hymn together? been richly blessed by our choir, by Zelda and Emmanuel, by the blessings of a, a beautiful baby, by all of your presence here. The mere fact that all of us are here together at this one spot is a miracle. The fact that we'll go forth from this place and do whatever it is we do this afternoon is a miracle. This week, as we go out into the world and all it has in store for us, may we go with eyes that see the miracles that happen every day in our lives. Go forth in peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's family said,